In this video, we're going to talk about enhanced navigation and form handling, a feature that is introduced to Blazor in .NET 8. This feature is a progressive enhancement made to static server rendering and it improves the user experience of a web app. So first let's see how static server rendering works without this feature enabled. So here we have a browser that sends a request to the server. On the server, the request is routed to a Razor component. The Razor component then executes and produces HTML and that HTML is added to the response and sent back to the client browser. The browser then displays the web page. Now, there are two problems with this approach. First, it causes a full page refresh. And second, for form requests, the user's scroll position is lost. So overall, it leads to a poor user experience. Now let's see how static server rendering with enhanced navigation and form handling works. Here, initially the browser sends a request to the server. On the server, the request is routed to a Razor component. The Razor component executes on the server using static server rendering and produces HTML. And that HTML is added to the response and sent back to the client browser. And the browser then displays the web page. But now the response contains a script called the Blazor web app script which is blazor.web.js. When the user now wants to perform a navigation or submit a form, the Blazor web app script or blazor.web.js will intercept that request and perform a fetch request to the server. Then on the server, the request will be routed to a Razor component and the Razor component will execute as usual using static server rendering to produce HTML and that HTML will be added to the response and sent back to the client browser. But this time, the Blazor web app script will handle that response and it will calculate the minimum number of changes needed to update the DOM and it will patch those changes into the UI and the UI is now updated. So with this approach, we don't have a full page refresh anymore and for form requests, the user's scroll position is also not lost. So this improves the user experience of the web app. Let's see how this works in action. For this demo again, I have the Blazor new features solution opened up. Now expand the components folder and double click app.razor. Right below the routes component, we see the Blazor web app script commented out. So this disables any progressive enhancements such as enhanced navigation and form handling and streaming rendering. Now if we run the application and go to developer tools, just right click anywhere on the page and click inspect and go to the network tab and make sure all is selected here. Reload the page and go to the counter component. On the right hand side, we see the full response coming from the server, including all the static assets and everything. And if we look at the loading spinner here and navigate to a new component, we see there is a small blip. This indicates that a full page refresh is occurring whenever we navigate to a new component. Now let's go back and uncomment the script out. So this turns on enhanced navigation by default. Once again, let's run the app. Right click anywhere on the page and click inspect. Go to the network tab and make sure all is selected here and refresh the page and navigate to the counter component. We can see a fetch request was initiated by the Blazor web app script which is blazor.web.js and the counter component executed on the server and the response was returned. We can confirm that a full page refresh is not occurring by looking at the loading spinner here again. As we navigate to a new component, there's no blip this time. Now let's go back and go to home.razor. Now as I already said, enhanced navigation is enabled by default with the Blazor web app script. Now what if we want to disable enhanced navigation on a per link basis? So let's say we have an anchor tag that links to the counter component. And I would like to disable enhanced navigation for this link. So to do that, we have to use the data enhanced nav attribute on the anchor tag and set it to false. Now once again run the app, right click the page, click inspect, go to the network tab and make sure all is selected here and refresh the page and click the counter link. We can see there is no fetch request that is being initiated by Blazor web app script for the counter component. Instead we get the entire response from the server. This is because we have disabled enhanced navigation on the link. Now, enhanced navigation can also be controlled hierarchically. So for example, if we place the anchor tag inside a div element and set the div elements data enhanced nav attribute to false, 
then enhanced navigation will be disabled for the anchor tag inside that div. Now let's see a scenario where we want to disable enhanced navigation. Let's say from a Razor component, we want to navigate to a non-Blazor endpoint such as a Razor page. So now go to the program.cs class file and add the required services for Razor pages. So builder.services.addRazorPages and scroll down and register the endpoints for Razor pages by calling app.mapRazorPages. Now right click the project and select add new folder and name the folder pages. Now right click the pages folder and select add razor page. Select the razor page empty template and name the razor page test. And on this page, create a h1 heading with the text. This is a test page. Now from the home page, we want to navigate to this test page. So go to home.razor and remove the data enhanced nav attribute from the dev element and set the href attribute value of the anchor tag to test and set the link text to test. Now run the app, right click the page, click inspect and go to the network tab. This time select the preserve log checkbox here and on the home page click the test link. We can see at first a fetch request is being made for the test page. Then a full page request is being made for the test page and we get the response here. This is happening because if the destination is a non-blazer endpoint such as a razor page then enhanced navigation does not apply. So a second request will be done using a full page load. In order to avoid this duplicate request we can disable enhanced navigation for this link. So now let's apply the data enhanced nav attribute to the anchor tag or the dev element and run the app and right click the page, click inspect, click the network tab and make sure preserve log is checked and all is selected and click the test link. We can see on the right hand side here, we don't have the fetch request anymore. Now let's talk about enhanced form handling. Right below this div, create a div element and style it to consume the entire viewport height like so. And below that div, create a form element with method set to post and form name directive attribute set to my form and inside that form use the anti forgery token component and below that create an input element with name set to my input and finally create a button element with type set to submit and the text as submit. Now run the app and scroll down and enter some text into the form and click the submit button. We see that the scroll position is now lost. This indicates that a full page refresh occurred and enhanced form handling did not occur. This is because for form requests, enhanced form handling is an opt-in feature. Now the reason this decision was made is that if enhanced form handling was by default enabled for a form post and if the form posts to a non-blazer endpoint such as a razor page then obviously the initial fetch request will fail and a second full page request has to be made. Now doing a duplicate post request may lead to a duplicate transaction on the server. So in order to avoid this the enhanced form handling feature is opt-in. In order to opt-in to enhanced form handling we can apply the data enhance attribute on the form element like so. Now if we run the app and scroll down and enter some text into the form and click the submit button, we see that the page has not lost its scroll position. So this indicates that a full page refresh did not occur. So enhanced form handling was being used. And by the way, if you are using the edit form component to create a form, we can use the enhance component parameter to turn on enhanced form handling for the form. Now let's talk about the data permanent attribute. This attribute can be applied on any element and it simply preserves the content of that element whenever an enhanced navigation occurs. Let's see how it works. Under components folder, expand the layout folder and double click main layout.razor. Now go to the div with the class top row and replace the anchor element inside it with an empty div element whose id is set to my div. 
Now let's set the content of this element using JavaScript. So scroll down and create a script element and inside it say var element equals document.query selector hash my dev. Now set the inner HTML of the element to div content inside an h1 tag. Now let's run the app and on the right hand side here we see the text div content. But when we navigate to a new component we see that the div content has disappeared. Now navigate back to the home component we still don't have the div content here anymore. Now let's understand why this is happening. First of all remember that the content of the div element is being set client side via JavaScript. Now when we navigate to a new component using enhanced navigation, the component is going to execute on the server to produce HTML and that HTML will be added to the response and sent back to the browser. Now the Blazor web app script or blazor.web.js looks at the rendered response and sees that the div content is not anywhere in the response. Now since enhanced navigation applies changes based on the return response from the server, it simply discards this div content and that's why the div content has disappeared. Now in order to preserve the content of this element, whenever enhanced navigation occurs, we can use the data permanent attribute on the div element like so. Now run the app, we can see the div content is preserved when we navigate to a new component. Lastly, we have the enhanced load event that we can use to listen for enhanced page updates and streaming updates. So go to app.razor and after the Blazor web app script reference, create a script element and say blazor.addEventListener pass in enhanced load for the first argument and for the second argument pass in a lambda and call console.log there was an enhanced update. Now run the app and right click the page, click inspect and click the console tab and navigate to the counter component. We see there was an enhanced update being logged into the console. Likewise if we do a couple more times, we see the number getting incremented. Let's talk about two more things. When we want to do a programmatic navigation, we know we can inject an instance of navigation manager and call navigation.navigate to and pass in a URL. Now we can use a second parameter called force load which by default is set to false. When force load is false, then enhanced navigation will be used for the requested URL if it is available. If it is not, it will simply do a full page reload. We can explicitly set force load to true and when we do that, the navigation will be performed using a full page reload regardless of whether enhanced navigation is available or not. And also we can refresh the current page by calling navigation.refresh. It accepts a boolean parameter called force reload which again is by default set to false. So when it is false, the page will be refreshed using enhanced navigation if available and if it is not available, the page will be refreshed using a full page reload. And we can pass true to the force load parameter so that a full page reload is always performed even if enhanced navigation is available. So that covers the basics of enhanced navigation and form handling. Next we'll talk about another progressive enhancement called streaming rendering.